Let's just talk about Hostel 3 first. <laughs> okay. Hostel 3. Now, this was a movie that I don't even... When the fuck did we first hear about this, that this was coming out? I think it had to be like a couple months ago, maybe. I think somebody brought up Scott Spiegel was directing. Yeah. Scott Spiegel. Yeah. Anyway, I think it might have been... Just uh, ignore her. She'll go away. When we were talking about Intruder or something like that, that that got brought up that he was directing Hostel 3. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is I think it was one of those movies that was just kind of made in like two or three weeks. It looks like it. (laughs) Yeah. I'm kind of... I mean, I know that the second Hostel didn't do that well at the theaters, but I'm kind of surprised that they just like... Well, not, I don't know. I'm kind of surprised I continued on with the series, I guess, more than anything. You know, there's a reason, though, man, that people got tired of this type of movie. And it's just the fact that they keep putting it out over and over and over again like this. And they just, ne- it's never going to end, I know that. But it's just, that those kind of movies are so fucking depressing and well, I think those kind of movies are, are, are kind of passe now. Nobody really likes that shit anymore for some reason. I mean, that... That whole torture trend started from like 2000, what, five to probably about 2008 hardcore and then it kind of died off. Well, that's the thing I can't figure out about this movie though is that, okay, they put this out. It's exactly the same type of movie as one and two, right. except it's in America and not in like some foreign country. It's in or Las something Vegas. Like that. It's exactly the same style and everything like that. But it's they don't have an audience for that anymore. What the fuck is... Well, let's talk about the movie, though, first, yeah, yeah. before we get into it. I mean, the, uh, it's kind of like the same story as The Hangover, except the uh, the friends and stuff that are hanging out in Vegas, um, they get captured into this, what would you say, like a satanic like game show type thing. Where all the members of the whatever that club is, I don't even know. I'm not. I'm not an expert on the. There's hospital. a little bloodhound tattoo, whatever. Yeah, the bloodhound club, whatever. Bunch of shit. They're all like gathered in this room, and the there's a guy that tortures them or whatever. There's different types of gangs behind the uh, the glass, and I don't know if people bid on exactly what to do to the. Victims. Well, I think they bid on like what's the what they're going to use on them, yeah. and some of them like if they're going to use a certain instrument to kill them or whatever or how it's what's going to happen to them and all this stuff and everybody's yeah. bidding money on it and all this <sighs> and it all I, goes you know, to hell from there actually at the beginning of it i thought at the very beginning scene i was like wouldn't it be neat if they turned it around and it was like you know the americans were taking the the foreign people hostage and putting them into the hostile thing and, and all that too. Do that would be too original well, they did it in the beginning, anyway. The Russian, well, the yeah, Russian it was Gulf. kind of hitting it, but like, but it, it it didn't really like go anywhere from there, other than that particular part. Yeah. And then they all end up in Vegas or whatever, and they were they were doing that. But it started off well, and I was like really kind of hopeful for it. But then it just it devolved into the exactly the same thing, like it just set piece after set piece of them being tortured and murdered and it's like i look at that now like you should really look at it like disco or something like anybody that likes that shit should be ashamed of it really like now that's completely i mean i never liked it to begin with anyway in the beginning but people that did like it then should definitely not like it now you should see that by now well the thing is uh, about these type of movies and with us is we say stuff and we say stuff that really pisses people off sometimes Sometimes we get really hateful on this show and say stuff. But there are other times where we're really lighthearted and joke about stuff. There's nothing lighthearted about anything in any of these movies. I mean, there's not a break from the, I guess, the brutality of it. There's really no comedy in any of these movies at all to make it lighter for the for the viewer. And that's the thing I noticed about the Hostel movies, the Saw movies. We were talking about... Um, what were some of the other really shitty ones that come out? Captivity. Teristas, Captivity. Yeah. All those movies really just are really for just really bland people that just are in it for the gore and the violence. Well, there it. is a subgenre of people that like this type of shit, though, man. Yeah. And it's like, it's the hot topic-ish kind of emo goth 
kids that, you know. I think a lot of the, what they did was a lot of the people that were not really hardcore horror fans kind of latched onto it just because it was like, it was like the girls gone wild shit or right. something. Like it got kind of popular for a while where people were like, oh shit, it's the new Saw movie that's coming out, you know, or whatever. We've got to go see it. And a lot of them were like probably what, 18 to 23, 24 at that time. And they kind of just left and they never came back after a while because they got sick of it. I mean, it basically is the exact same thing. All the Saw movies are pretty much exactly the same, especially all the sequels. And all these Hostel movies are, are primarily the same. It's the same formula. There's nothing. They don't really ever change it up. I mean, the funny thing was, especially with Hostel, I think we even did On the Road for Hostel too. We were like, this time, it's females. That was the only thing that changed. That was, yeah, yeah. that's it. It's almost like the Look Who's Talking movies, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if they did another hostile movie with, like, animals killing each other or something. Well, that I think that this, I would imagine this will probably be the last hostile movie that comes up for a really long time. Yeah, and I was hoping, like, okay, maybe this is something that's it, it's going to still be pretty bad, but, hey, I'll be able to laugh and say, hell, it's better than the Eli Roth ones. But not it's really, really not. I mean, it's just the same sort of thing. The problem is, though, is that if you, it's just that formula. It's the formula of the movie. They just carried it over and there, it, you can't, to me, you can't make that formula fun and you can't make it interesting and you can't make it entertaining. It's just there for that certain group of people that really get off on that type of film. And they I really want to keep it brutal. I've just never been one of those fucking people, I don't think. Uh, I don't know. I, I, Bloody Disgusting loved it. <laughs> well, of course. I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's a bloody disgusting select. You see that shit? They've got like their own DVD. Oh yeah. Out with. But uh, if anybody's interested, uh, you can. Uh, the only special feature is a commentary with director Scott Spiegel and actor Kip Pardue. Kip Pardue. <laughs> That's a good boy, Kip Pardue. That's Hostel Part Three. Came out uh, late last year. It's the unrated version. Scott Spiegel, I expected more out of you, buddy. I really did. I didn't really expect more out of him. He also did From Dust Till Dawn 2, Texas Blood Money. Texas Blood Money! 